for the redwood forest and the Gulf Stream water. This land was made for you and me. This land is your this land. land. This land is my this land. land. This From California to New York this Island. This land is for the redwood forest and the Gulf Stream water. This land was made for you and me. This land was made for you and me. This land was made for you and me. Please welcome to the stage the Chief Executive Officer of the Greater Orlando Aviation Authority. Mr. Kevin Tebow. Uh, John, you never cease to amaze me. Um, good afternoon. Good afternoon. There we go. Welcome to our celebration here of Terminal C. You know, we tried to do this back in September 28th, but I think something else was in the way. But we're glad to be here today, and I want to thank the Liberty Voices for that beautiful rendition of This Land is Your Land. So let me take some liberty with using that and really talk about adapting this, those words to this terminal is your terminal. Terminal C belongs to all of us and is a vision to reality for the greater Orlando area and in fact, the great state of Florida. Today is an important celebration, so let's begin our presentation with the presentation of the colors by the Greater Orlando Aviation Authority's Aircraft Rescue and Fire Fighting Color Guard. Followed by the presentation, the Liberty Voices will perform the national anthem, and our Go Aboard Treasurer, Belinda Kierkegaard, will bring the invocation. Please stand for the presentation of the colors. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes, broad stripes and, and bright stars through the the right. 
Good afternoon. If you'll join me by bowing your heads and raising your hearts. Almighty Father, thank you for bringing us together today to celebrate this incredible facility, a portal of inspiration into our community. We thank you for the wisdom you instilled in the leaders over the years to help make this airport and facility possible. Please continue to guide us so that we may continue your good work. May you bless this facility as well as all the individuals that work to create it and all the passengers that are traveling or will travel through it. With your grace, bless them and us with good health, well-being, and safe travels. We ask that you also embrace all of those in harm's way or those who may be suffering. Instill in, your, in their hearts your love and provide relief and safe passage home. Thank you once again, Eternal Father, for this day, the present. Let us never forget the present is a gift, one we have never seen before and will never see again, and thus should always be treasured. We each pray this in the name of which we hold most sacred. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. has become reality. And in this reality, Orlando International Airport is a true intermodal transportation facility where passengers can take a plane, a train, or even an automobile to their destination. This new Terminal C will further our efforts to diversify our local economy and bring the world to Central Florida. Having a world-class airport like this helps us attract top-tier companies to the area, creating good-paying jobs as one of the largest economic engines in the entire state of Florida. We're thrilled that in bringing millions of visitors to our community, we are contributing to the economic well-being of the entire region. I grew up here in Central Florida, so I remember coming to the old Quonset hut to fly out on Eastern. This airport and now this beautiful Terminal C is a perfect example of what this community can do when we work together. It has taken the collective vision of our current board, previous Gullah board chairs, dozens of board members over the years, and countless members of the community to help us bring this Terminal C vision to reality. This new expansion at the Orlando International Airport is an ultra-modern construction project that brings all of the technology that one will see in an airport anywhere in the world. Orlando continues to show the world what happens when innovation, technology, and transportation opportunities are combined. The result is a state-of-the-art airport that connects people from around the globe and highlights how unbelievably real Orlando really is. It's my hope that Terminal C will shine as a beacon of inspiration for our entire region for years to come. It has taken over 40 years of planning by some of Central Florida's visionaries, and I know that we are continuing their legacy and are planning and dreaming of much more in the future. Vision becomes reality. Vision becomes reality. Vision becomes reality. Vision becomes reality. is our gateway to the rest of the world for ideas, for people, for business and commerce. Communities with great, great international airports prosper and grow 
The v video you just saw captures some of the innovation this terminal brings. From facial recognition to 100% automated screening lanes at the TSA checkpoint right behind me, it is a model terminal for the future. Operations at Terminal C began on September 20th, 2022, 41 years to the day of when we opened up Terminals A and B in 1981. With the arrival of Aer Lingus Flight 35 from Manchester, England, we welcomed our first passengers. Since that time, we have welcomed 11 airlines and nearly a million passengers to date. One of our special guests includes Dave Clark with JetBlue. JetBlue is our anchor airline here at this terminal and is in the midst of all of this activity. Thank you for being with us here today, Dave. We celebrate Terminal C's opening at a time when our passenger volume is returning to pre-pandemic levels. Throughout the Thanksgiving holiday period, we saw over 1.75 million passengers move through MCO, a return to the 2019 record numbers. Terminal C helps to offset those heavy volumes in our main terminal as well as accommodating up to 10 to 12 million passengers annually, helping to sustain the growth of this community. Terminal C is also the foundation for the intermodal hub that will welcome planes, trains, and automobiles. It has taken decades of strategic planning and years of construction to open up Terminal C. Many of you here today directly had a hand in bringing this innovative terminal to reality. I want to thank our business partners, our contractors, our small business owners, all of whom work without ceasing to ensure that this project met the vision. This includes former and current GOA board members and many elected officials. So I want to take this opportunity to recognize some who are here with us today. From the state level, State Senator Geraldine Thompson. <clears throat> State Secretary of Transportation, Jared Perdue. <laughs> District Secretary for the Florida Department of Transportation, John Tyler. I saw him here, there he is. From Orange County, Mayor Jerry Demings. <laughs> Commissioner Mayor Uribe. Where is she? There she is, Uribe. And former Mayor and GOA Board Chair, Linda Chapin. From the City of Orlando, Mayor Buddy Dyer. Commissioner Jim Gray. Commissioner Regina Hill. And I believe there's another commissioner that joined us from the city. There he is, right there, Commissioner. Thank you. And former Orlando Mayor Bill Frederick, welcome. I will say, Mayor Chapin and Mayor Frederick, a lot has changed since you were here on this go aboard. From Osceola County, Kissimmee Mayor Olga Gonzalez. And then former board chairs, Bill Miller and Cesar Calvet. We are so glad each and every one of you joined us here today. And for those of you that served on this board or serve in the community, thank you for your service and your support. With that, I'd like to introduce our current GOA board chair, Carson Good, who will help pilot us through the rest of the program. Thank you, Kevin. I know I speak for the rest of the board and our incredible staff. It's been really exciting to have you help us lead this airport to further greatness. You've been a godsend to me and the rest of the authority. Um, I do want to also mention Commissioner Wilson, Orange County, 
Commissioner Reba, did we forget? Um, Chairman of UCF, Alex Martins. And uh, Ralph Martinez, who serves on the Expressway Authority Board. Did I miss any other appointeds or electeds? Um, it's my honor as Chairman of the Board of the Greater Orlando Aviation Authority to be here today to greet you and welcome you to the future of travel, Terminal C. Today we step into the future. For everyone who passes through Terminal C, air travel will never be the same. This is truly vision becomes reality story. This facility is further proof of continued ingenuity, dreams, and commitment of our community in the quality and growth of our airport and its ability to help stimulate economic well-being and the quality of growth through our entire state. This airport has truly become the gateway to Florida, and it has played an important part in making our state the economic powerhouse that it is. On behalf of my fellow board members and GOA staff, we hope you'll enjoy the newest addition to our 12,000-acre airport campus. GOA board members and I have had the opportunity to walk through and see and work with this tremendous facility, and I hope you'll soon, if you haven't done it yet, get to explore the airport. To get this to reality, it took a ton of planning, persevering, meeting the challenges that we faced, both nationally and globally, to reach the goal of delivering this gift to our community. Tremendous accolades to our incredible staff, including Phil Brown, are you here? Our recently retired Phil Brown. Our incredible staff for many years who worked tirelessly putting their hearts and souls into making this the very best they could make it. Many of them, where is Brad Friel? And many others in those final critical weeks. I also want to thank our current board members, and it's just, it is an awesome board that we have now. Um, I want to thank our current board members for pushing us to the finish line. Vice Chairman Dr. John Evans for his passion for world-class customer and employee service. Our Treasurer Belinda Ortez Kierkegaard for one of the most wonderful invocations that I think I've heard that was so appropriate for her passion to constantly pr improve our small business and minority programs. Tim Weissire for his strategic insights, his passion for continuous improvement in the ways that we do business. Craig Mateer, is Mr. Mateer here? Possibly the most qualified person to ever first step on the board for his unique insights into how our opera airport works and how airports function. <clears throat> and to our mayors, Mayor Dyer and Mayor Demings, who we'll hear from in a minute. Each of you unlike the rest of our board, and probably 90% of us, were born and raised here, chose to stay here, raise your families here, and have dedicated your entire lives to making this the wonderful community it is today for us to raise our children, our families, and to build our businesses. Thank you. And thank you for your consistent support in this great project. I also want to thank the many board members that came before us for almost 50 years. Keep in mind these are volunteers who dedicate sometimes extraordinary amounts of time, energy, and passion to help our community. Now I want to introduce our new Secretary of Transportation, now that we stole the last one from the governor. Um, and uh, who will continue to grow our great state, Mr. Secretary Jerry Perdue, representing the state of Florida Department of Transportation, which has been so instrumental in our airport's expansion into a multimodal transportation in the region of Florida, who will be very important as we grow this amazing airport and rely on a whole network of transportation coming in and out throughout the state. Secretary Perdue, thank you for coming. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, what, a, what a proud moment this is for the state of Florida 
and for this region. Um, this Central Florida is actually very special to me. Not only do I call it home, um, I also previously served as FDOT's district secretary here when your um, wonderful new CEO was FDOT's state secretary. So incredibly proud. I've been anxiously awaiting, and even, even back when Kevin and I were serving together at FDOT, we knew just how important and strategic this Terminal C project was for the state and for this region. And so it's an incredibly proud moment to see it finally come to fruition. Um, this terminal offers a framework for um, people who are traveling and passengers to have yet another choice. And as Florida's population continues to grow exponentially, we have a call and infrastructure to continue expanding, but to expand in a way that offers diversity of choice and desirable choices. And so as we continue to invest and diversify, you know, Terminal C here at Orlando International Airport is a great model, a great example of what that really means. FDOT is proud to partner with Orlando International Airport to invest over $157 million in this project. And we certainly look forward to future opportunities to continue investing in strategic infrastructure. Um, and, and Governor DeSantis and our state legislature, year in and year out, have continued to make those strategic investments that enable us to diversify as we grow as a state. Um, there's nothing more important and, and nothing bigger than the call and the mission of serving Florida's communities. We're so proud of our communities. We live, we work, we play here, and Florida's a great state to be in. So this is, this is incredibly exciting and really looking forward to the future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Secretary Purdue. Airport access also helps attract business. Studies show, studies show, that one of the key questions a company considers when relocating is how are we going to be able to get our people around the country and around the globe from this location? Mayor Dyer knows the answer. As a longtime GOA member and one of the longest serving mayors of the city of Orlando. Mayor Dyer? Thank you, Carson, and good afternoon, everybody. So around City Hall, we say on special days that these are the days that we live for. And this is certainly one of those very special days that we live for. And we've had a lot of those out here at the Orlando International Airport, but this is culmination of a lot of uh, energy, hard work, and thoughtfulness by a lot of people over the years. Orlando International Airport is a global gateway to the most visited city in our country, probably the most visited city in the world. And for fo most people, including these behind us that are wondering what's going on here right now, um, their first impression of what makes Orlando unbelievably real is here at the airport. So no city anywhere is better at welcoming people to their community than Orlando. Whether it's fun, play, business, or returning home, the Orlando experience, which was in fact trademarked by this airport, uh, begins right here at Orlando International. So to those who designed and engineered and built this awesome space, job well done. So you understood a core truth um, of the built environment is captured in a quote attributed to Sir Winston Churchill. Quote, we shape our buildings and afterwards our buildings shape us. And scholars have long reported that cities are fundamentally limited, commercially, socially, culturally, until a city has a port. And in history, that includes trading posts, and then it was seaports, and today the basic building block of a city is its airport, especially for a city like Orlando and our connection to the world and the world's connection to us. And that's why back in... Uh, is anybody born before 1928? You don't have to raise your hand. But back in 1928, the city of Orlando first invested in a tiny municipal airport near Lake Underhill. Total cost, $2,500. How about that? I think Terminal C cost a little bit more than that. 
Um, and before long, a rapidly growing city and the advent of the jet age led the city to look for a larger airport. And in the 60s, the city's aviation division began supporting commercial service at McCoy Air Force Base. And a lot of people don't know where those MCO letters come from, but it was McCoy Air Force Base, where we're standing today. It was a joint military and civil facility. And then in the late 60s and 70s, anticipating future growth, the city purchased thousands of acres around, of land around the Air Force Base. And um, our airport, having been thoughtfully planned out by generations of board members, I think LAX and LaGuardia and Miami all would fit within the footprint of our airport. And in the 70s, through the efforts of Mayor Langford and uh, Congressman Lou Fry, McCoy Air Force Base in 1974 was transferred to the city of Orlando. And uh, you got vastly different versions of how exactly that happened, depending on whether you got that from Lou Fry or you got it from Mayor Langford. So, there's probably a blend in there of exactly how that happened. But it was rededicated as Orlando Jetport at McCoy and today's Orlando International Airport. Um, so that incredible transformation from a military base to one of the busiest commercial airports, not in the state, not the country, but now one of the busiest airports in the entire world was only possible through what? Partnerships and collaboration. And that's what we're all about here in Central Florida. So. The growth and quality of our airport is because of federal, state, local governments and the business community all working together hand in hand to lift Orlando up. So thank you to our federal department, the par partners, the Department of Transportation, Secretary Buttigieg, the Federal Aviation Authority Administration, the Department of Homeland Security, and decades of supportive administrators and Congress people, including Soto and Deming. So thank you to them. But also thank you to the state of Florida. Governor Scott, before discovered Governor DeSantis, Governor DeSantis, um, the legislature, the Department of Transportation, Secretary Purdue, thank you. And to Chairman Good, thank you, and to all of my fellow board members and uh, former board members, uh, past and present. So good to see the two former mayors that were so instrumental in the development of this airport over the years and then served on our construction committee when we first started looking at Terminal C back, I can't even remember what year that was, but it's probably 10 years ago at, at least. But your hard work and long-term vision has really brought us to today. So also a big thank you to the tourism community, the hospitality industry, and all of our airline partners. And by the way, I'm flying out tomorrow and I was gonna take Delta, uh, but instead I thought, wow, I bet there's a JetBlue flight so I'm going to delay my flight by an hour so that I can travel on JetBlue out of this terminal for the first time tomorrow. And finally, congratulations and thank you to Kevin Tebow and to Phil Brown. Where are you, Phil? I haven't seen you. Well, of course, you would be in the very last row, not taking any credit back there. But also, you know what? Let's give Kevin and Phil a big round of applause. Okay, and watch this last line. So that's what makes the Orlando experience unbelievably real. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor Dyer. <clears throat> Terminal C propels the Orlando International Airport as the gateway to Florida. With more than 100, I love saying that, Miami says they're the gateway to Latin America. Three years ago when Kevin and I first started talking, he says it's the gateway to, this is the gateway to Florida. And you're right. With more than 145 domestic and international nonstop connections, accessing almost a third of the state's population in just a two hour drive. A gentleman that knows the value of connectivity of attractions, businesses and residents of Orange County, our great mayor, Jerry Demings. Good afternoon to all of you. Uh, it is a magnificent day here in Orange County, and as a lifelong resident of this community, 
I am uh, overjoyed at what the Orlando International Airport means to our community. Uh, I have had the privilege for the last four years to serve on uh, the Greater Orlando Aviation Authority's Board of Directors, and it has been uh, just a joy to serve in that role. And uh, earlier today, I was re-sworn in as the fifth elected mayor in Orange County, so that means I get four more years to serve as well. But three of our six uh, county commissioners uh, either were sworn in or re-sworn in today as well, and I get the opportunity to serve with uh, the two commissioners who are here today. This airport is significant to us for many reasons, but it is part of the economic engine that propels our Orange County Convention Center. Our convention center has a $2 billion economic impact on this community, which is part of a $75 billion tourism industry here. So if you think about that, we cannot be the tourist destination of the world without a world-class airport like the Orlando International Airport. So it's significant. It's significant uh, to me because I have family members who work right here at this airport. And for all of those other individuals who work here at this airport, who depend on this uh, airport to take care of their families is significant. It's significant to all of us in this room because of what it means for business development for this community. If you think about the type and the diversity of businesses that are moving here, part of that reason is because of the Orlando International Airport. And so as we look forward to the future, we look forward to this airport um, being a shining example of what a public uh, program can do, a public construction project can mean to a community. This is the stuff that uh, dreams are made of when you're able to build a facility like this. And as I think about the fact that we complemented the builders, we complemented uh, these two extraordinary CEOs. But this project could not be de delivered or could not have been delivered without that team, that great staff here at the Lando International Airport. And for all of those, I call them the unsung heroes that do the heavy lifting every day, I think we owe them a debt of gratitude for keeping this uh, shining uh, edifice uh, in good order every day. It's the cleanest airport that I see when I travel around the world as well. Uh, the bathrooms are the cleanest bathrooms I know in any airport as well. So to that staff, that team, uh, to Mr. CEO, thank you uh, for the leadership that you have provided to them as well over the time. Thank you to the staff for the work that you're doing here every day. Uh, I look forward to uh, what uh, this means to our community. Uh, God bless. Thank you so much, Mayor Demings. Isaac Newton once said, we see far because we stand on the shoulders of giants. And here in this community, we stand on the shoulders of those who after decades and decades of planning and construction, visionaries who have brought, come together as a community and brought to reality this, this facility. I am just privileged to stand here as chair, standing on a platform of the culmination of these collective efforts. And you, Mayor Frederick, and you, Mayor Chapin, are the shining stars of, uh, of the foundations that are here now. Um, and we really, really appreciate the legacy that you've given us. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce one who was engaged in the vision and later served on the Oversight Committee for Terminal C, the former chair of the GOA Board and our former mayor, chairman of Orange County, Mayor Linda Chapin.
Hello, and how wonderful to be here with all of you today. No hurricanes? A wonderful holiday season and a busy holiday season about to begin for all of us. And of course, the dedication of a wonderful new facility at the very heart of our community. I like to think that I have a long and intimate relationship with Orlando's airports. Our youthful mayor, Buddy Dyer, recalls the Quonset Hut. One of my earliest memories is of disembarking from what I am told would have been a DC-6 at, at the old Orlando airport back in the 50s when I would come for spring vacations visiting my grandparents on Lake Conway with the smell of orange blossoms everywhere. And when I married a New York City boy and brought him to Orlando, the Air Force Base was a critical part of our country's well-being and history. But the excitement really began for Bill Frederick and for me when the city took over the then about to be International Airport. I was privileged to serve in three different terms on this airport board as a private citizen to begin with as a county commissioner and later as county mayor. That means I have more going away plaques than probably any of you. <laughs> but it was always a privilege and I am overcome this morning by some of those memories. Uh, the dedication when Mayor Frederick cut the ribbon in 1981, the Wall Street Journal article in which they said, Orlando picks a bad time for a new airport. They'll never fill that airport up. We had built an airport for 12 million passengers. And how many, Kevin, are we serving now? 50 million passengers? It's an incredible story. But I do have to interject that the vision doesn't just become a reality today. The vision has been part of the history of this community asset for many years. Since John Wyckoff talked about first the Florida experience, John wanted people to come in and get off an airplane and come through a tunnel and then their world, like the Wizard of Oz, would turn into Technicolor because everywhere around them would be the Florida experience. And so that has been part of our work, all of us and all of you, for 40 some years. There are those who have tended to the vision, like Carolyn Fennell, who has always kept her fingers on the pulse of John's vision. There are so many people who have contributed along the way. But of course, today, we celebrate the latest iteration of John's vision, of your vision, of so many people who have brought us to this particular day. I, for one, am looking forward to how the vision will be even enhanced under the direction of this board that sits before us now and the current leadership. So thank you so much for being part of it and for being part of this event today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor Chapin. Uh, a few months ago, I set up a Twitter page, which I'd never done before, for it's a, my chairman's Twitter page, and I work with Carolyn Fennell and some other people to research the airport, and I came across incredible quotes from Mayor Frederick, incredible quotes from Mayor Chapin, the photo, and, and much of which I posted there, um, and one of them was that article from the Wall Street Journal that was highly critical of the authority in the city of Orlando saying, I mean, it was came from the Wall Street Journal that this is irresponsible government. They will never get to 10 million passengers. Everybody we know flies to Miami and then might take a day and come to Orlando by car or by bus. And it's an example of irresponsible government. 
Um, and you should read that. It's on the Twitter page I've got, but it's a bunch of other places. And some great, strong, bold quotes from Mayor Frederick and Mayor Chapin. And uh, if you are bold, you've got to be visionary. You've got to be bold, because just visionary without bold goes nowhere. Uh, but you also better be right. Um, <laughs> and time proved you were right, because we have been running, as everybody knows, constantly over capacity year after year, struggling to try to keep up with the launching pad that was created by this community. Um, and uh, thank you so much for both of your incredible work. Partnership in this business industry is very important. And as a member of the team of our domestic anchor, we're pleased to introduce senior leaders of JetBlue Airplane Airways, Mr. Dave Clark. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having us. I'm JetBlue. I'm Dave Clark, excuse me. <laughs> Jet, I'm JetBlue's head of revenue and planning. Um, and we are so excited to be here today to, t to celebrate our new home here in Terminal C of the Orlando International Airport. I'd like to recognize on behalf of JetBlue the very long list of partners and visionaries that we've heard about today who brought this vision to reality. We owe you a huge debt of gratitude, especially our distinguished speakers, the entire GOA leadership and board, and the many, many others who have made this possible over the years. On behalf of JetBlue, thank you very much. I'd also like to thank our incredible JetBlue crew members who have been hard at work to ensure the transition to this new terminal goes smoothly. Believe me, moving an entire airline operation to a new building is not an easy feat. I'd like to recognize our more than 4,000 JetBlue crew members based right here in Orlando, which join our over 24,000 crew members throughout the world. For those of you who aren't aware, in addition to our crew members working here at the airport, in Orlando, JetBlue has a pilot base, a flight attendant base, a maintenance base with a hangar, a training center, a call center, and a corporate support center, all right here in Orlando. This community is extremely important to us, and we're very happy and appreciative to, to be a large part of it. We're thrilled to call this new Terminal C home as we continue to grow here in Orlando as the terminal's flagship airline and its only U.S. carrier. For us, this move will allow new growth for JetBlue and more low fares for this region. It was back in the year 2000, 22 years ago, that JetBlue started serving Orlando with a single destination. New York City's JFK Airport. Later this month, we'll be providing service to over um, 22 destinations with nearly 70 flights per day. And we're very pleased that our Orlando flights have been performing very well, and it's been truly wonderful to see tourists return to this growing area. We look forward to continued growth here and more flights and more affairs to the Orlando area. Now, we all know Orlando is an incredible destination. I have young children. They love coming here. They're the age where they're graduating out of Disney and going towards Universal, but Dad still loves them both very much. Um, but on the JetBlue perspective, we have one more fact just to prove what an incredible destination Orlando is, and that is Orlando is now JetBlue Vacation's number one domestic destination. Mm -mm. This wonderful facility here at Terminal C further, um, furthers our commitment to the high-quality JetBlue experience. Our customers traveling through Terminal C will be able to enjoy the modern amenities and the numerous food and retail offerings. I'll admit my personal favorite are the interactive video screens right in the middle of the main atrium on the other side of security. But it's also the modern infrastructure that will help streamline our customers' ground experience and complement the amazing JetBlue crew members. We're happy to see key infrastructure included, such as a state-of-the-art baggage handling system, new and modern TSA screening lanes, and of course, the upcoming link to nearby rail service. Terminal C is truly a world-class customer experience. And as you may have heard, JetBlue's in the process of purchasing another airline here in Orlando. As we continue our journey to acquire Spirit Airlines, 
we will be able to deliver even more service and even more low fares. We look forward to receiving regulatory approval so we can provide even better service and even more low fares through Orlando and the entire region. This will bring our customers a strong low fare competitor to the big four national airlines and customers will benefit from this combination. Orlando will play a huge part in our combined operation and we look forward to sharing more details on our future growth in that area. In closing, we're absolutely thrilled to be here in our new home in Terminal C and for the continued growth and service that is to come. And once again, just an enormous thank you to all the partners, all the visionaries, and all the, um, the, the visionaries and, and um, many people over the years who have made this new terminal possible and for providing us such a fabulous new home and new terminal for our customers in Orlando. Thank you. Thank you. Throughout thousands of years of human civilization, great cities were built around great ports and gateways, as Mayor Dyer said, whose quality and growth were driven by world-class leaders who drove the quality and growth. Orlando is blessed with a 50-year history, as we've said, of visionary leaders who understood the importance of a superior gateway, and that's why we're here to celebrate. While we have accomplished construction of this great project, we must continue in our destination to be the greatest airport in the world. That's why we already have begun work on a strategic plan that will project our goals and vision to the next 10 years. Our most lofty goals in the next 10 years will succeed only with the active support of each of you in the room, our staff, our board, our community leaders, feeling good about this now, our community leaders, John Evans, did you get this going while I'm talking? Our community leaders, all working together with your innovative ideas, your resources, your positive can-do strategy, and your support, which we need. We will focus on several factors to determine how the Aviation Authority evolves to meet its new challenges and support our dynamic community and state. With each of your help, we will again go from developing a vision to making it a reality. Thank you each for coming out and being part of this great, exciting day. Okay, so with that, ladies and gentlemen, buckle your seats, put your seat backs and tray tables in their full upright and locked position, and let's take off and dedicate this new facility here with the support of our airline partners here. Welcome our airline partners. Now can we have the board come up? 
we'll have our ribbon cutting. would not be an airport without airlines. And these are the airlines that have helped to successfully open the sea. Air Lingus. Azul. British Airways. Caribbean Airlines. Emirates. Yes. 